Hey guys, today I'm back checking out Plasma, and one thing I've noticed they've added since I played the demo last fall is a component spawner. With this, you can spawn in any item you want from the catalog, and I wanted to try using this to make a functioning 3D printer. Now, these tubes I was spawning in were absolutely massive though, and I wanted to try making them a bit smaller. You can also see here, I'm flipping the component spawner around, and I'm also setting it so that it pins the blocks in place that it spawns. Now, by doing this, you see here, the blocks are staying perfectly in place to set distance away from the spawner, and that should work really well for making a print. One thing I was going to need to get working, though, was some way to move around the print head. Now, at first here, I was thinking of using some sort of conveyor belt system to move the print head around, but the issue I was having with this is that it was pretty imprecise, and every time I put the block on this, it'd fall in a little bit of a different way. Now, that's going to be a problem if I want to keep putting things down in the exact same spot, so next, I thought about using pistons. Now, to get the distance I was going to need, though, I was I was gonna need to stack these, and this whole thing still just seemed a little clunky. Next though, I found this frontal extender, and with this, it pretty much did exactly what I needed it to do. Now, I also wanted to test out driving this thing to see if I was gonna be able to make it slowly move up and down, and after getting a few nodes in here, I finally gave it a test. Now, surprisingly, this actually did seem to work pretty well right out of the gate, and as long as it goes slow enough, I should be able to always reach the target I want. But of course, this is only gonna work for the Z-axis, and for the other two axes, I was going to need two more frontal extenders. Once I got another one in place though, I also wanted to add on some legs to give this thing more of a stable base. And after securing that here, I added in the other frontal extender, and I also added in some logic and knobs so I'd be able to move all of these around independently. This did seem to be working pretty well here, and with this very basic setup, I was able to get to any point that I wanted. Now you can even see here, I ended up printing this simple little wall, and while this printer was good, there was a specific kind of 3D printer that I really wanted to try to recreate. This is called a delta printer, and you can see here by moving up and down each of these three arms, I'm going to be able to move around the print head. Now this is cooler in my opinion, but it is going to be a lot harder to create, and to start out, I wanted to try building one of those arm sections. Now I built up this little platform here, and on that you can see I put down a frontal extender, and on that I put down another one to get me even more height. Now with this, I added on two servos to the sides, and these are going to be set to have zero zero torque. This means they're acting pretty much just like bearings, and once I got those in place here, I also added in two arms. Now, of course, I pinned up the bottom, and releasing it here, you see those arms are able to freely swing back and forth. Now, this isn't too bad at all, and you can see now what I'm doing is extending out the arms to be five units long. This should give me a good amount of distance to print with, and you can also see here I'm rotating these arms down 60 degrees to start. By doing this, it allowed me to add a second arm to the other side, so I'll be able to attach it right in the middle. Now, of course, to do that, you see me adding that now, and you can see how right in the middle here they meet at this central point. Now, all I'm gonna need to do is link these together, and I was thinking of using a couple more servos as bearings. You can see here what I'm doing is adding some extra blocks onto the edge of these, and after getting these in place, I'm extending them out to hopefully grab onto each other. The hope is that they're gonna attach on, and by doing this, it should make both of the arms act as one solid piece. The issue though is that nothing in this game is self collision, and since I can't attach things in a loop, there's really no no way for me to attach these arms to each other. Fortunately though, I did have an idea here, and you can see what I did is deleted off one of the arms, and now on the base, I'm building up that same loop structure. This time though, I'm sitting the arm right on the inside of that, and by doing this, they're gonna count as two separate devices. This is gonna allow them to have collision in the center, and you can see now, I'm rebuilding up that connection that I had before. Now with just two arms here, I'm only going to be able to print things in a single line, but I figured this would be at least a good starting test. Now, of course, looking at it now, when nothing's trying to move, it does still sit in the center, and moving up and down some of these arms, you can see a bit of movement. Now, it wasn't quite as much as I was hoping for, but I figured that I was on the right track, and seeing this, now what I wanted to try doing was building my full three-arm printer. And you can see here, I'm using this hexagonal panel. Now, I knew this panel was going to be nice to start with here, since all of the edges are 60 degrees apart, which is going to make it really easy for me to put down all the servos I'm going to need. Once I had six arms, on there, you can see I'm putting down some arms, and I rotated them and extended them out. Now by doing this, I'm going to be able to add some more servos at the top and attach them together with this arm. After this, I could put a frontal extender on the bottom of these, and after adding on another one as well, I'm able to attach it to a base. Now my plan was for these three legs to all sit on the ground, and basically just get held there by a massive amount of weight. Now unpinning this here and trying it out, it 
wasn't half bad, except that half of the arms weren't connected. This was because I forgot I can attach things in a loop, but at the very least, I was able to use three of the arms here, and once I had this in place here, I tried manually lowering down one of the arms. This didn't really seem to work though, and I could see here that the leg was lifting itself up. Now that was a little weird, but I thought the problem might have been that I didn't pin the legs well enough in place. Now to do that here, you can see in the middle, I'm adding on some more hexagons, and after I did that, I ended up capping them off. Now I also tried adding on some automatic movement to all these arms to get this to move the way I want, but I could still see that I would rather lift up one of the legs than rotate around the center piece. Now if I try lifting up all the frontal extenders at once, this at least does lift up the print head, but if I'm not able to individually move any of these arms, I'm not going to be able to move around the print head side to side. One thing I was thinking though was that I might not have had enough servos. As it is, the arms are able to bend up and down, but they're not able to tilt side to side at all. I added a couple of extra servos to hopefully let that happen. Now unpinning this here, I could see that I was closer, but there still was a bit of binding, so to hopefully fix that, I tried using hinges instead. Now the hinges of course are designed to pivot side to side, so with these in place, I wanted to see if they'd perform any better. And you can see now, I used the same double hinge design on the top with the frontal extenders, and once I got one of these made, I copied it over to the other two arms. Now I added on some super heavy panels on the bottom to keep this thing on the ground, and finally here, you can see that I am getting some slight tilting out of the print head. This still wasn't perfect, but I was able to start moving it side to side here, and I knew that I must have been on the right track. Now ideally though, I did want to get this moving completely fluidly, so to hopefully solve that, I deleted off these two arms, and you can see now, I had another frontal extender to the hexagon. What this is going to do is allow itself to freely move back and forth, and you can see now, as I move up and down the arm, it's able to pull in and out the hexagon. Now this is pretty much the movement that I'm looking for, but there's also one more complicating factor once I add in the other arms. Because they're not going to be directly across from the first arm, they need to be able to bend slightly side to side in order to allow it to move. Now after staring at this for long enough, I thought that one of the problems I was having was that these hinges were stacked directly on each other. Now you can see to create this here, what I ended up doing is offsetting them directly into each other, and by doing this, both hinges take up a single block of space. Now this functions exactly the same way once I'm moving this up and down here, but ideally once I add on those other arms, it should start to function correctly. Now to simulate that movement properly here, you can see what I ended up doing is putting the frontal extender at a slight angle to the first arm. This means that as I move up and down the arm, it's going to push in the print head at a slight angle, and in order to do that, it needs to be able to bend slightly. So of course, once I saw this, I knew I was ready to add on the other arms, and after getting the three of these attached up here, you can see what I ended up doing was moving up and down each of these arms in a sine wave pattern. Now the way I set it up here ended up moving around the print head in this sort of circle-like pattern, and while this was working, to actually get the printer to print something at a specific coordinate, I was going to need to do some math to convert that XY coordinate into heights for all three of the arms. Now this conversion between XY coordinate and the three arm heights was surprisingly not as hard as I thought it would be. To start, I measured the distances the arms were from the center of the printer and place them in a triangle like this. Now, using the coordinate we inputted, I could find the distance the arm needs to travel to reach that print head. After that, since I know the length of each arm is 5 meters, it was pretty much just a case of applying the Pythagorean theorem and using those two numbers to figure out the missing height. And you can see now, I need to implement all of those equations into the game. This took a little while, but once I got everything inputted here, I wanted to put down some LCDs to track what was going on and also put down some knobs that were going to act like my X and Y inputs. Now, once I had all those in place here, the numbers I was getting out did seem to make sense, and they agreed with what I had in Desmos, so I touched them up to the arms here and wanted to give it a shot. Now, right out of the gate, I was trying to make this move around in a sort of grid-like fashion, and while it did act kind of strange sometimes, you can see here it started over on this one leg and slowly was creeping its way over to the other one. Now, once I was confident enough that that was working, I had it start spawning some cubes, but of course, this does come with some problems. Now, finishing up this very simple grid test here, I wanted to look at the results and see what I can improve. Now, the first thing I realized is that these cubes are all rotated 
quite randomly. This is because I only have one linkage attached on all of the arm pieces, and ideally I would have two separate arms for each frontal extender. Now I did have a solution for that later, but you'll also notice here it sort of bends down right by this one arm. And I think the reason this is happening is that my math did make a couple of assumptions that led to situations like this, but as long as I shrink down the print area to be more in the center of this grid, I think I'll be okay. Now to deal with that rotation problem, I had it on a motor here, and you can see I also had it on a directional sensor. What this does is spins back and forth and keeps itself facing perfectly straight. This was surprisingly effective here, and you can see now the print head is staying almost exactly where it should. Now I tried giving this a test, and while the first few cubes did kind of come out crooked, the rest did seem to be coming out mostly on a nice grid pattern, and letting this continue, it did seem like things were getting better. It was a little slower now, since I did have to wait for the print head to face perfectly straight, but overall, it was very close to what I wanted, and I figured now I might as well add in the number array block, and what this is gonna let me do is start programming where to place blocks. Now my plan here was to write in alternating ones and zeros, and by doing this, every time it sees a one, it'll place a block, and if it ever sees a zero, it won't. By doing this, I'll be able to create some lines here, and you can see now I'm starting out with that print. Now things were a little crooked, but overall, it actually was making those lines here, and I tried again, but this time went for a checkerboard pattern. So now with this thing able to be programmed, what I ended up doing was moving up those bottom frontal extenders, and I added in a Z axis. Now, every time I finish a layer, it'll just move up a little bit on those bottom extenders. And after adding in some walls in now, you can see now I have a pretty solid design. With this though, I am going to need something to print out, and I decided to go with this. Now unfortunately, I do need to manually program in all of the points for it to move, so notepad here, I went ahead and tried putting down ones and zeros for all of the layers. With this all programmed in though, I wanted to start out and give it a quick test. Now in this first test here on a non-color print, I'm able to print up some layers relatively quickly. This was all working fine, right up until I had a few extra blocks print slightly slightly oddly. Now I messed around for a little while trying to figure out what I did wrong, and it ended up just being that when I programmed this in, I forgot to put down a single layer of blocks. By doing this, the whole printer got messed up, and you can see now after quite a while, I finally fixed that and went for another print. Now for a non-color print that's 10 by 10 by 10 blocks, it takes about 14 minutes to finish. This was quite a bit faster than I was expecting, because that means that each individual block is somewhere around a half a second. Non-color prints though, though, aren't exactly the most exciting here, and you can see, while you are able to sort of see what this print is, it would be a lot better if I could use some color to end up distinguishing what's going on. The final product here did end up being relatively straight though, and you can see that each block is only slightly off-center. Now to get some color in the prints, what I ended up doing was adding on this color painter here, and after offsetting it into the machine now, what I wanted to try doing was attaching it up with the component spawner. To figure out which color to paint things, it was also pretty easy. What I ended up doing was setting it so that one meant that the color was going to be red and two meant that the color was going to be blue. By adding this in though, it does take quite a bit more time for the printer to end up fully painting a block since there is some delay after you place it down when you're first allowed to paint it. This basically doubled the print time and now things were taking somewhere around half an hour to print. Fortunately though, by waiting a little bit longer between each block, my prints were also a little bit more accurate, so at the very least that did seem to end up improving things. And you can see now, check out the final design, it's a a lot more clear what we're looking at. Some of the dimensions aren't perfect here, and I could probably turn up the resolution of the printer a little more if I wanted, but overall, I thought this wasn't too bad. Now, to be honest with you, without having any loops in the machine, it was very difficult to get this working. All three of these bases are completely separated from each other, so as I print, if I don't pin them perfectly, perfectly in place, they will end up sliding apart slightly and completely ruining my accuracy. But guys, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. If you have any more build ideas in Plasma, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'm looking for some good stuff to try out. But otherwise, till next time.